Welcome, gentle viewer, to the first of the Coral Finder Toolkit revision movies. You can use the following slideshow to test your skills with the Coral Finder. Using the Coral Finder, watch and pause this slideshow so you can study the test corals. At the end of the exercise, the remainder of the movie runs through the same corals as worked examples. Revision Movie 1 is basic knowledge and should be easy for beginners. Your slideshow starts now. And we're off. Specimen 1. No need to mess around here. It's branching. Let's go. The next step is to see if it has an axial corallite. Yep, sure does. Problem solved. For the beginner, there is no need to go past Acropora. Acropora is an easy genus to recognise, being made totally distinctive by the axial corallite. By contrast, having over 130 species makes this genus somewhat difficult to learn at the species level. That said, there are many distinctive Acropora species, like this exposed reef slope specialist, Acropora robusta. Specimen 2. Okay, here we go again, another branching coral. This time, the branches form flattened blades. Remember, for ease of use, the Coral Finder key groups often use broad physical concepts about form or shape, which you will need to interpret. So we follow the same logical pathway. Does it have an axial corallite? Up close, we can see the flat end blades do not have a discrete differentiated axial corallite. Instead, the blades are covered with bumps, and between the bumps, a very small corallites about one millimetre in diameter. So scan pages two and three of your coral finder for a good candidate. The ones with bumps seem to be on page two, so let's go in for a closer look. The only one with real bumps, or verrucae, is Posilopora. Note how the species in this genus can take a variety of branching forms, including blades. But as the coral finder notes, the verrucae are distinctive. Note also how the corallites are both on and among the verrucae. Specimen 3. Here we have a coral with an encrusting form. The thin plates key group would appear to be an option, although I'd keep the massive thick colonies key group in the back of my mind. Let's have a closer look. Gosh, look at those great big blade-like scepter sticking up from among the tentacles. This coral is positively spiky. Using the thin plates key group, we could reason that maybe lookalike pages 22 and 23 are worth a glance. Hmm, nothing spiky there. So what do we do? Let's go back to the key group page. Where else could we go? Try the massive thick colonies key group. Note page 16. Colonies with raised surface textures. Galaxia, with its large protruding blade-like scepter, is a clear winner here. Coral nerds, and I count myself among them, call these excerpt scepter. Note that the coral finder mentions that the scepter can sometimes be hidden by their tentacles. Specimen 3 is a good example of how to be flexible when using the coral finder. 
Because the Coral Finder contains common and typical genera, you can expect the answer to be in here somewhere. But because corals are very plastic in form, sometimes you will need to think laterally or bend the Coral Finder's logic. Don't panic. It's easy, quick, and you can do it underwater to impress your friends. Specimen 4. So we have a large, massive coral. Up close, there are two things to notice about the coralites. They have common walls, and they are tiny. This suggests lookalike page 13. A quick scan shows that the genus Parites is the only candidate to consider. In fact, among the true hard corals, there is no other genus for you to confuse it with. Notice I said among the true hard corals, which is a big hint that there may be another non-hard coral option with very small coralites. Check the comments section. Back to specimen 4, parietes. Another feature worth noting is the hillocky surface of the colony. This is a typical feature in the massive growth forms of the genus parietes. Parietes is a very common genus and shows a wide range of growth forms other than massive. Check out the Coral Finders index page for examples of what else parietes can look like. Specimen 5. And halfway through the race is a coral with a growth form that suggests the thin plates key group. Among the lookalike page options, page 22, crumpled surface textures, looks useful. Scanning the page, we could be tempted by Leptoceras, Pavona, and Pachycerus. So we'll need to get up close and personal to sort this out. In close-up, you can see how our target coral has septa that form fine regular ribs either side of a beaded centre line, suggesting Pachycerus. By contrast, Pavona and Leptoceras have corallites arranged in valleys, with septocosti running between centres. Although superficially similar, Pachycerus, with its regular ribs at right angles to the valley ridges, is very distinctive. Pachycerus is another coral with very variable growth forms. Check out the index page for examples of what else it can do. Specimen 6. Despite its compact form, this is still clearly a branching coral. Even at a distance, we can see there is no axial coralite, and that the knobbly branches have very small coralites. So we are bound for lookalike pages 2 and 3. A quick scan shows a similar growth form for Stylophora on page 2. Up close, we can see the coralites are very small and scaly looking. This is because they have small hoods a very distinctive feature of Stylophora. Note that despite the very compact branching form caused here by living on a wave exposed reef slope, you can still see the other typical Stylophora characteristic of having blunt or slightly flattened branch ends. Specimen 7. Now we have a coral that is just dying to be put in the meandering key group. So let's go there. To choose a lookalike page, we need to confirm the wall type of the coralites. This big close-up shows you what you need to know. Common walls. The groove running along the common coralite walls is just a notch in the skeleton, not a gap separating two coralite walls. So judging from the scale bar, lookalike page number 9 would be our starting point. Instantly, Ulufilia and Symphilia seem strong candidates. For me, I instantly know we are looking at Symphilia because of the thick carpet-like tissue characteristic of this family of corals. You can often see the big spiky septal teeth pushing through this thick tissue. It's a characteristic look and very distinctive. Specimen 8. Another meandering coral. Hmm. Up close, we also have daytime extended polyps, but I'll go for my first take. 
The Karlites have widely separated walls, which sends us to lookalike page 6, regardless of scale. Scanning page 6, we can see that there is no need to muck around. It's euphilia. Note. The different tentacle shapes shown in the coral finder relate to different euphilia species. And remember, until you get your eye in for euphilia, it is easy to not see the separate walls because of the daytime Incredible. extended polyps. Specimen 9. Okay, with two corals to go, we're closing on the last one. Well, this coral is an example of where the branching key group bleeds over into the columns key group. Remember, key groups are just artificial constructs I've made up. In the real world, they bleed into each other. I'm going for columns, which is quick and easy to do because there is no lookalike logic, just instant gratification. Well, the texture of the coralites eliminates everything bar Pavona and Samocora. We'll need to compare the close-up detail of our coral with that in the coral finder. A real-world scale check suggests Samocora over Pavona, but it's hard to see the coralites to be completely sure. A word of warning here. Big close-up images can resolve more detail than you can actually see underwater. So it's important to keep true scale in mind and to focus on learning the look of a coral. Note how the tentacles in this test coral and the big close-up image can change the typical look of Samacora. Specimen 10. Coming up the final straight, We've got a coral with a lot of meandering ridges and valleys, which makes the choice of key group easy. The coral finder's logic now demands to know how the coralite walls are formed. Wow, it's pretty messy down there, so we'll need to have a close look. In the field, I use a magnifying glass to see this detail. OK, in this big close-up, which is bigger than you would be able to see in the field, you can see that the ridges and valleys do not form coralite walls. Rather, they hold groups of coralites with indistinct coralite walls and septocosti that flow between the coralites. The coralites themselves are very small, about 2 mm across. This puts us in the 1 to 4 mm category and sends you to lookalike page 7. Instantly, we have two strong, correctly scaled candidates charging for the finish line. It's Pavona and Costnerea, neck and neck. And the winner is, as I'm sure you all know, Pavona, with its non-granular septocosti and sharp-edged valley ridges. Pavona species vary a lot in scale, and the degree to which these ridges and valleys appear on the colony surface. If this result surprised you, Go back and watch Movie 6 from the Coral Finder Toolkit training series.